Hello everyone, welcome to Financial News on Channel 4, today being August 23rd, 2021. Of course, I, my co-host Paul Municle is going to give us an update as to what took place last week. And I am going to give uh, what information we did get from Ameriprise, uh, what is taking place this morning. Paul, I'm sure you have a lot to talk about. Thanks, Ron. Yep, today I'm going to talk about um, our aging society and the impact that has on the overall economy. Um, so let's, let's dive in. You know, our aging society does have material implications for the long-term economic growth rate. At the end of the Great Recession, which was July in 09, 15.5% of the U.S. population was in retirement. Now that's according to the Dallas Federal Reserve. As of April 2021, that figure had jumped to 19.5%. Keep in mind, the first of the baby boomers, born between 46 and 64, reached their full Social Security retirement age, which is 65 for them, in 2011. The percentage of population reaching this age has grown in the years since, a process that would normally reduce labor force participation. Thus, the overall size of the labor pool, slowing the U.S. economy's potential rate of expansion. Now indeed, the labor force participation rate did decline after 2011, but not as much as it would have if everyone reaching 65 had left the workforce. The rate began 2011 at 64.2%, reached a low of 60, <coughs> I'm sorry, 64.2%, they reached a low of 62.4 in August of 15, but then started slowly to rise again primarily due to a growing percentage of people over the age of 65, either remaining or returning to the workforce. <clears throat> In January of 2020, the rate had rebounded to 63.3%. Um, now, any economy's potential growth rate is highly dependent on changes in the size of its labor force. The most basic equation for economic output is the number of workers producing goods or providing services times how many production, productive those workers are. Any consumer business or government spending beyond the level of domestic output needs to be imported, which benefits someone else's GDP, not the home countries. As the pandemic set in, older individuals returned to the sidelines, bringing retirement percentages back in line with their prior trends. Um, the, and over time, the U.S. economy would clearly benefit from older individuals returning to the workforce. And unlike the common circumstances of decades past, businesses nearly across the spectrum would welcome these individuals back. Okay, thank you, Paul. And you know, I'm, I, I got this note from Ameriprise of this morning's information. And uh, this is the information that Ameriprise had shared with us as of this morning. Uh, need to know the U.S. stock futures are higher this morning after all three benchmarks, major benchmarks, lost ground last week. And the yield on the 10-year Treasury is modestly higher ahead of the Fed's annual Jackson Hole Symposium. Any comments on that, Paul? I mean, obviously there was a lot going on with the world last week with pullout from Afghanistan and other issues with COVID, potentially probably frightening the market a bit. Um, we did rebound in the major averages a little bit on Friday. And as you just reported, today looks pretty good so far. Um, so we'll wait and see. Yeah, and, and the equity markets in Europe are broadly higher as stocks rebounded from their f worst week since February. Again, everything going on with COVID and Afghanistan, it's really not just our problem. We know the whole world has the same problems here. Yes, that's so for sure. So markets get scared sometimes. And, yeah, uh, but pull back. It looks like we've recovered a little bit so far. So, so far, so good. And global oil prices are on track to snap up the seven-day losing streak with both WTI and Brent crude up more than 3%. And that may have impact on our gasoline prices, unfortunately. 
Uh, year to date index percentage returns. Dow Jones is up 16 percent. S and P 500 up a 19 percent, and Nasdaq is up 14 percent. Yep. So even despite last week's pullback, we still have the major averages posting very strong numbers on the year. So hopefully we can hold on to them. Hopefully we can. Stay with us. We will be right back with our other show called Your Money. Paul will have an excellent topic to share with you. We'll be right back. And we're back with uh, Your Money in Paul Munico with Ameriprise has a topic that he's going to share with us. Paul, take it away. Thanks, Ron. Um, today we're going to talk about those individuals that are working and have the potential for stock options um, through their work or employer. So let's look into how that works. Um, capitalizing on employee stock options, that is a key component of compensation for many individuals who work for privately held or public companies. And it's the opportunity to own company stock. Now, this is often made available through an employee ownership plan. But if your employer provides you with this benefit, it's important to understand how the employee stock options work and the most effective ways to take advantage of them. The opportunity to own shares in the firm you work for can, at times, be extremely valuable. In other circumstances, the actual financial benefit may turn out to be limited. Much depends on the level of success the company enjoys. One of the most appealing aspects of stock options is that it gives you a greater stake in the potential success of the company. Prices and dates um, to know before you make any decisions about how to take advantage of stock options you need to understand the price you will pay for the shares of company stock and the timing of those purchases. This is key to determining the ultimate benefit the employee stock option plan may have to offer. So let's go over some of the critical terms to understand. One is called strike price. This is sometimes known as the grant price or exercise price. This is the price you'll pay to purchase shares of the stock utilizing the option. The price and number of shares available to you is specified at the time the company grants the option. Another term to be aware of is market price, and that's the current value of a share of stock. This is important to know at the time you intend to exercise your option to buy company shares. Also be aware of the term vesting date. Um, after receiving the option, you may have to wait for a specified time period before you can exercise it. <coughs> when the vesting date passes, you may choose to purchase the stock at the strike price. Another term is expiration date. So once the option is fully vested, you may choose to purchase the stock at any time before the expiration date. Now timing does matter, does matter. The real benefit of holding stock options is the discount you receive on purchasing company stock. This happens when your company's market share price has risen significantly above the strike price specified in your option. You can derive a meaningful financial benefit as soon as you purchase shares a concept often referred to as the option being in the money. If the market value of the stock stays below the strike price by the time you reach the expiration date, you may want to let the option expire. In this instance, you would consider purchasing company shares on the open market at the market price. Once the vesting date is reached, you can purchase shares in several ways. You can pay cash for the actual shares, or you can swap the shares of stock that you already own to cover the purchase cost at the strike price. If you purchase shares, they become part of your portfolio and the overall financial strategy. As you exercise your stock options, it's important to make sure you do so with your overall risk tolerance in mind. Holding too much of a single stock in your portfolio 
increases your exposure to risk and is a possibility if you accumulate significant shares of company stock over time. We always say to review your options with a financial professional who can help you capitalize on the benefits of having an ownership stake in your employer's firm while maintaining a well-diversified portfolio. And again, as always, options is a complicated topic, as is your own um, retirement share purchase option plan through your employer. So again, can't recommend it enough. Talk to your employer so you make sure you understand your plan and always talk with your financial advisor before you take any action on anything. Paul, if uh, it's so important that if you're going to be investing like you just shared with us, you really should have a financial advisor to help you through all the terms and conditions and things that you're walking through to make sure you fully understand. Now, typically, if you have someone that would be asking questions or needing help, would they be uh, actually visiting your office or can that be done via phone? Um, you know, we can do it via, via phone um, because of COVID and everything. We're all set up to do things via video conferencing, so we okay. can do it that way. You're going to want to speak with your own provider through your employer, but what you said is very important. I mean, stock options, they're the greatest thing when the market, when your company goes up, but we've all heard the horror stories about companies going bankrupt or under, and if you have a large portion of stock in that company, that might not bode so well for your retirement plans. Right. Well, thank you, Paul, for bringing that topic. For Paul Munichel from Ameriprise Financial, myself, Ron Jankowski with Channel 4 and PLO Sites, we wish you good investment day.